In June of 2007, the League, in large measure because of the stories that we had been running, uh, held a summit of uh, all the medical professionals from uh, every team, as well as some League officials, to discuss the state of the research. Uh, just before this, a fourth player had been diagnosed with chronic traumatic encephalopathy. A lot of people thought, well, that's only four guys. You know, you can't make statements based on four guys. And I knew that you could, because this is something that does not happen in the general population. I got an interview with the commissioner during a break, and I recorded the conversation with his permission. No record of a concussion. He may have had a concussion Swimming. He could have had, had, had a concussion baseball. swimming. My brother had a concussion swimming. He hit his head on the side of the pool. Come on, Alan. It does happen. The concussion happens in a variety of different activities. Four out of four. Are you suggesting that all four men yes. sustain their damage in fields other than football? Stop it right there for a second. So what do you... Take, take this back a little bit. What are you thinking in the middle of this conversation? I'm scared out of my mind. Do you really want to know? I'm scared out of my mind. I'm standing there talking to the commissioner of the National Football League, basically dumping at his feet a problem that I knew in my bones was going to be immense for him. And in a way, I was becoming the math teacher that I had always planned on being. All I wanted to do was get him to understand the probabilities at work here, that it wasn't just me being a pain in the ass. It was the fact that when you're four out of four for a million to one shot, something's up. So at the end of 2009, I get a call from a source of mine who has a document that he needs me to see. What is it? I can't tell you, but trust me. So we meet at a restaurant in New York and he passes it over, and it's a study that the University of Michigan has done of retired NFL players. Asking them all sorts of health-related questions. Do you have heart disease, arthritis, depression, kidney function? There's like 50 pages. And their finding was that the NFL players look like they're a pretty happy and healthy group. But if you looked at the bottom of page 37 or something, there was this one little section and it talked about how they had asked, have you been diagnosed by a physician as having Alzheimer's disease or other memory-related disease? And there were the rates. From age 30 to 49, 1.9% had said yes. So it was 19 times that of the national population. Well, it hadn't become public yet. I don't know if it ever would have become public had it not been leaked to me. And that was the game changer. There is a new report uh, from the NFL. It's an alarming report linking football and dementia. And other memory-related diseases. How much higher? 19 times. 19 times. 19 times more likely to have Alzheimer's disease or memory-related diseases than men who never played professional football. And Congress, which had shown some interest in this subject before, was just waiting for something to act upon. This was what they were waiting for. Commissioner Goodell, is there a link between playing professional football and contracting a brain-related injury, such as dementia, Alzheimer's, depression, or CTE? Chairman, and the medical experts should be the one to be able to continue that debate. But our bottom line is we're not waiting for that debate to continue. We want to make sure our game is safe, and we're doing everything we possibly can to create information that we can share with our players. It's, it's very important responsibility to set the right... Well, you've testified to that. Yes. But I just asked you a simple question. What's the answer? The answer is the medical experts are no better than I would with respect to that. Now, he's the commissioner of the league. He's not a scientist, and one could argue that he shouldn't necessarily know the answers to these things. Our commitment to make sure we make the safest possible uh, right. field for our... Okay, I've heard it. It sort of reminds me of the tobacco companies. Uh, Linda Sanchez was not mincing words. 
no link between smoking and... She basically said, you have a health problem with your product and you're covering it up. This is what she said. You are like the tobacco industry. And those words did not sit well with Roger Goodell. No matter what kind of helmet you build, no matter what kind of equipment that you have, it is a dangerous sport. The only question is, are you going to pay for the injuries that they have received in helping you to be a multi-billion dollar operation? And he left those hearings knowing that he had a real problem. There was a problem, at least in perception, and probably in reality, and it was time for change. And every week, there was a new change in the NFL. Players were no longer allowed to go back into games after having sustained a concussion. The definition of concussion has become much more conservative to include things like feeling dinged or a, a bit of confusion, seeing stars dizzy or vertiginous, poor balance. All those things are signs of concussion. Crack back block can't be to the head. You cannot hit a defenseless person in the act of catching a ball before they've secured it or throwing the ball. The wedge has been reduced from four men to two men because the person breaking the wedge was largely using his head to do it. Maybe we can get away with losing these things because the rest of the game is still good enough that people won't really miss it that much. I don't know anybody who doesn't watch football anymore because there's no head slaps. Oh man, you know, I love those head slaps. There's no head slaps anymore. That ain't football. Why don't we just put a skirt on them? And then you had the resignations of the two guys who were the heads of the committee who had been saying for so long, there's nothing to see, folks. Move along, move along, nothing to see here.